Um, in fact, I think that since we've only got an hour, we'll go ahead and I'll just um, kind of get things kicked off um, before we turn it over to our panelists. Um, I want to welcome you today to Refuse, Reduce, Reuse, and Then Recycle. This program is part of CAL's Go Green with CAL's Earth Month activities. A full schedule of events can be found on the events page at cals.org. My name is Julie Rhodes, and I will be moderating this panel today. With us today are two people who are very well equipped to educate us on this topic and give us much to think about. I'd like to introduce our participants before we begin. Melinda Glasgow is the Sustainability Officer for the City of Little Rock, which she's a position she's held since 2012. She began her career with the city in 2008 as the Recycling Coordinator. She also serves as the Executive Director of Keep Little Rock Beautiful. As the city's Sustainability Officer, Melinda has developed and coordinates several ongoing programs and events that promote sustainability within the City of Little Rock, often through community partnerships. One of her first accomplishments was the launching of Little Rock Recycles, a program identifying and promoting the city's recycling efforts involving curbside recycling. She was also instrumental in establishing the city's first residential single stream recycling program in 2012 called Recycling on a Roll and featuring yellow top recycling carts that residents can conveniently roll to the curb. In recognizing the need for public awareness, she shares best practices that engage, inform, and encourage citizens to participate in their own individual recycling and sustainability efforts. Next up is Lenny Massanelli. She is the Recycling and Sustainability Program Educator for the City of Little Rock, a position she's held since October 2019. As the city's sustainability educator, Lenny is dedicated to helping create and facilitate programs, projects, and policies that promote sustainability within the city of Little Rock and across the broader community. Her position is within the Little Rock Sustainability Office, and they work closely with the Little Rock Sustainability Commission and its five committees on issues involving energy, transportation, education and community outreach, waste and reduction, and finally, environment, health, and wellness. Presently in this COVID-19 pandemic, Lenny has been focused on new ways, new and creative ways that city residents can relate to sustainability efforts and feel empowered to improve the quality of their lives and feel connected to each other and their shared environment. So let's get this conversation going. As we proceed, I think we will save um, the questions for the end of the session. So please feel free to enter questions in the chat and then we will get to those questions or as many as we can um, toward the end of the session. So today, before we kick off the actual topic of the, um, this session, there may be some folks watching who are not aware that Little Rock even has a sustainability office. So I'm wondering if we could start off, Lenny and Melinda, if you could give us a little color as to what the office does and how citizens might be in touch if they'd like more information. Well, sure. Well, for, for, first of all, it, our office is an office of two, of us, and uh, we are embedded in the public works department of the city of Little Rock, which uh, we're in the conference room. So if you wonder what, the, what these, what these, you know, dump trucks and, and pictures of all this stuff are, you know, so we, we are embedded in the, uh, the public works department here. And we work uh, across a range of things. It's, 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 as you all know, sustainability really touches every aspect of our life, right? I mean, uh, so sure, recycling is like the obvious thing that everyone probably is aware of. Um, we also, the city of Little Rock, we own our own landfill and we recycle curbside yard waste out at our landfill into mulch and compost. Uh, that then is for sale at a very, uh, actually very inexpensive price to anyone that lives in Pulaski County uh, out at our city landfill. Um, we also do tours and um, work closely with um, the, the folks at, 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 our, at our city landfill. Uh, we um, 
like I mentioned, maybe me back in, in, in um, when you were talking about me or whatever, we work with a lot of partners across across the board from Pulaski County Solid Waste District. So we work with the, the Solid Waste District to Metro Plan to Ar Audubon, Arkansas. I mean, we could keep Little Rock Beautiful, you mentioned. Um, Julie, so you know, just many, many partners, even in Cal's, um, is, is, is a great partner. Um, just to mention a few, uh, just in all different aspects of how to, like some of the things we're talking about today, but you know, energy and you know, like Lenny, Lenny listed uh, the, the different um, teams, right, and the sustainability Five teams commission. of the commission. That's right. And before the pandemic, you know, you said I got in this uh, job position in October 2019. So I had about four months to have a normal um, experience in this position before the pandemic and then everything changed, right? So um, during those four months, I went to schools um, and did recycling programs uh, during school and after school programs. I um, went to civic groups. I did tours at both the landfill and at the earth, the materials recovery facility which is where our recycling goes and um so and and beyond so it was um just a different dynamic so when you were just saying that i've been seeking out those more creative ways to still get the message out during COVID 19 that's what we've been doing um and working closely with all the organizations she just named in the commission um to achieve that did, did some radio shows we've done We've done podcasts, and, and thank you for having us tonight. I mean, we, we've done a lot of these virtual events, right? Even our annual sustainability summit that we that we just had earlier in the month, a couple of weeks ago, was was virtual for the first time. So you know, we're, we're just trying trying to be creative, but re really, we we work across all aspects and with you know the state uh, agencies as well, like the uh, the state energy office. Um, I mean, you know, you just, you, you name it, there's hardly a topic that sustainability does, does not touch, along with, you know, community gardens and food insecurity and all the things that have been heightened th throughout this uh, pandemic. Ooh, you're on mute, Julie. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> That's another thing we say quite often, right? In our in our webinars and our Zoom. Gotcha. Thank you for uh, keeping me uh, keeping me on task there. But thank you all for the uh, explanation. That's very helpful. So let's go ahead and jump into the um, the actual program itself. And I love the title for this session: Re Refuse, Reduce, Reuse, and Then Recycle. So I thought, um, or we decided as we kind of talked about this, um, this session that we were gonna have, um, that it would make sense to just step through the R's in the list because um, each one is, is a slightly different, although they may sound similar in some ways, each one is slightly different. And I think this is a really different way to look at recycling of all these steps um, that can exist before you recycle. So let's start with Refuse. And I hear y'all have a creative um, organization to your uh, um, your table there. So <laughs> we, we, do have a, we do have a method to our madness here. Yes. So, um, so, so we, we know and talking with you earlier, trying to prepping for, the, for this event, that you're part of the Plastic Free Group. And uh, so, you know, we, you all made these little cards, of course, and uh, just for the audience to know, it's just to say no, uh, to refuse a straw. When you go, can you see that? Do I need to walk that maybe up closer? To you? There, there you go, Lydia's gonna take it closer. So a uh, thank you to the Plastic Free Group for actually taking the initiative on this and, and making these, so I have a little, a little holder in my office or whatever for those. And I do have them in my in my bag at all times. And I, back when we went to restaurants uh, and in person, I used to use them frequently. And and uh, so that, that's just, you know, on the front end, just to refuse that that that, that plastic straw, right? Just, just, just say no. And uh, here just are a, a few examples, if you will, 
of uh, different kinds of reusable straws. Um, that one has not been used, obviously, but you know, there's there are copper, there are short ones, there there are tall ones, there are paper ones. Um, so just from a, a variety of, of places, they're colored ones and whatever. And here, here, here are some larger ones. This was a, a, a freebie, you know, that, that, that I got somewhere. Um, but yeah, you just so, put it in a case like this, throw it in your purse or, or whatever. It's so easy to, or just keep it in your car if you right. don't have a purse and um, just refuse it as soon as you go through that drive through or, or sit in that restaurant. That was one of the things when I came on with the city that Melinda told me um, that I've never really thought about before was the first R is not, you know, reuse, it is refuse it, refuse it, refuse just that no. plastic bag at the grocery store, for example. Just, just, just say no. And even, um, so, you know, we're, we're talking about plastics, right? Mainly single use plastics is what we want to refuse. That is the, 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 the main items. And there are, there, there, there are a lot of those types of items. So, but you know, the beeswax wraps, right? They, these are really cool. A lot of you probably seen these or use these. They're awesome. They are awesome. Lenny and yeah, I both have good. them. Um, we got these at the Green Corner store. You can get them in a lot of different places, but Shelly Green has a nice selection of them in different sizes. So to cover, and they, it will actually stick, but not leave any kind of residue on a jar or a cup or a small bowl um, or something bigger. So these will last. I wrap my I wrap my cheeses just, in them and then just throw them in the in the drawer or whatever, and they last for a long time. You just wipe them off, you know. They're they're um, fantastic. Yeah, they're they're really great. So refuse that saran wrap. I haven't bought it a saran wrap or anything on that aisle in several years now. Um, another thing are diff different kinds of like. Um, little uh, sandwich bags sandwich bags instead of the zip bags you know they're they're small ones they're they're larger ones sandwich bags snack bags uh all of these sorts of things instead of those they sent the plastic ones right and you just wipe them out wash them out you know ready ready to go and there's there's kind of a different even this one different. is silicone and um it's very thick and uh it has a zip but um, I have several that I've had for going on three years now. Mm -hmm. um, so these are really big too and last a long time because they're just so durable. So mainly, like I said, these straws, this is, these are stir straws. We actually got these back in, in, in our kitchen here at Public Works because they were left over from a catering, right? So it's just a matter of when you do cater, uh, you know, we still come in the office and some folks do, is to request no plastic. And you can do that. And restaurants will honor that in order to get your business and to have your repeat business. But if it's uh, the other one is a is a more like a plastic stick. It's, it's, wood. it's, it's a little, little wooden stir stick, you know, instead instead of the little plastic one. So there are alternatives and don't ever be afraid to ask. You know, empower yourself to say, you know, we don't want this. If you have these, great. If you don't, we'll use something else, you know? And uh, so uh, Lenny and I do a lot of cleanups and we don't, we oh see gosh. a lot of these. We, we did a trash audit. I mean, it seems like half of it would be those straws um, yeah. from, you know, fast food. Fast food, right? fast food um, stuff. Yeah. So anyway, and then, you know, obviously, the, you know, the plastic bottles. So Lenny and I both, you know, <laughs> cheers. Well, we <laughs> cheers. <laughs> You know, we keep Little Rock Beautiful. We're on the Keep Little Rock Beautiful board as well. And uh, we have, we use these reusable. Uh, and you know, we have such great water in Central Arkansas. Central Arkansas water is the best. You know, year after year, they win awards. Uh, we partner with them a lot. Also, another, another wonderful partner uh, of the Sustainability Office. And um, so we just, we so last just drink last. tap water all, all day long. You know? I can't remember the last time I bought a single use plastic beverage container. Oh, I just, no. I, I have put it in my brain not to do that anymore. And if I want something, buy in bulk, make it bigger and put it in a, a container like this. Yep. And uh, even, even, you know, a coffee mug or whatever. So it's just, um, it's, and it's easier to do maybe at home and, you know, with kids or whatever, but then, if you're traveling or packing a lunch uh, for, for kids. So this is a little travel example. So here's just a little zip bag. And you know what, you can make up your own. 
I mean, this is this came together uh, from, from from this company that I love, Zoetica. But just get a zip bag, right? It doesn't matter. And just put your. Put, I've got a snack bag in there. I've got. Um, uh, as my mom said, is it kind of like Tupperware? And I'm like, well, mom, it's that concept, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know, so here is a food container with a smaller one in it. So um, if if I'm traveling and and you know just want to get food on the go, and when it when I eat it or whatever, then you can stack them back and easy to carry. And not to get too sciencey, but the the thing I've, I've learned a lot over the past year is that plastic breaks down into smaller pieces of microplastics. It never actually disintegrates and goes away. Whereas things like wood and bamboo, I now use a bamboo toothbrush and, and cloth, right? Those are things that will break down and eventually just disintegrate, but plastic is not. And since um, most people know or have heard somewhere that this problem with plastic. And so the more you can not buy plastic things and get your um, storage containers in a different material like this, the better it's going to be for the environment. Um, just just think to steer away from the plastic as much as possible. And you know, I used to travel quite a bit pre-pandemic. And so I would take this just even for, to travel. And then I had my own fork and um, yeah. you know, and, 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 and here's and here's my straw. And I would just keep, and even a reusable, you know, um, you know, cloth napkin, you just put it in there and then and a bag and, you know, it just all fits in whatever bag. And then I, I usually, when I travel, carry a bag. So it fits into my backpack. And so I have all of these things, these items already, you know, I've got all this stuff and here's even like a, like a cup. It's kind of like, a, kind of like on camping, you know, just think, just get your camping bag. And uh, you know these little these little cups that you know mash down, take up no room, just stick it in there. You know, so you always, you know, just you, this is a great easy way to travel if it's a short trip or international. I have used it uh, in, in all kinds of ways, and then and then if you have kiddos, um, Lenny has some good examples. Yeah, so all different sizes of, of cloth bags. Again, it's it's um it's a great go-to. There are plenty of places that sell such. And um, I really like, um, this is from Natural State Recycling, but I've got lots of mesh produce bags. So I really don't even want to use plastic bags in the produce department. So when I go to the grocery store, I have all my uh, reusable bags. Um, and then I take along my produce bags. They come in various sizes for different kinds of vegetables and fruit and what. And so this is easy to wash and reuse and reuse and reuse. No plastic. Absolutely. I have a I have a young nephew that uh, moved, moved to Little Rock recently, and, and I met him at Kroger to help him buy him a little food. I said, let's meet, let, let's meet at Kroger, and we can do a little sh a shopping or whatever. And he went over and got a plastic bag, and I screamed <laughs> out. I screamed. <laughs> and he's like, oh, my gosh. And uh, I want you to know he has never used another yeah, one of those anymore. plastic uh, produce bags again. Learn. I'm like, I didn't mean to make a scene, but I mean, oh my goodness. So, I mean, he was putting up, like bananas in there. Oh I'm my like, gosh, you don't even need it. Yeah, so you don't need that. anything. They're bananas. They already have. And they're, they're already contained. contained. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like what you, what, what, what's happening? Over there? But um, anyway, so, I mean, in here, you know, there's all kinds, you can kind of get fun with it. Look at this little, little, little you know, picture sandwich. You've got a little one, or, you know, whatever, picture bags. Yeah. Or, or just um, even, you know, go, go to your favorite, you know, one of your favorite places in their, in their shop. A lot of places, you know, Heifer, um, the Art Center Museum shop, a lot of places around town you can kind of represent Arkansas as you're out and about. Um, but even your grocery stores like Edwards Food Giant and Kroger, right there at checkout, they have reusable bags. It True. costs hardly anything. Uh, it, before, if I have failed to bring mine, right. um, I'll just buy for what, 99 cents or, or cheaper a, a bag. Um, I've actually run into friends at Kroger. I've given them some of my reusable bags. Like, you forgot? Here you go. Yeah. Uh, we like this um, this graphic. Remember the golden rules of waste management. So it's refuse, reduce, reuse, repurpose, and then recycle. So recycling is actually at the end after all these other things. Right, right. So 
we're kind of m m moving on from um, refusing and reducing. Um, another reduction is, you know, I have a cat. So, <laughs> you know, those little packets of cat treats and he's finicky. So some people call them sachets. They're just those little, yeah, the little packets. Packs. Well, they're, they're plastic, right? You can only send those to the landfill. So, I, you know, I've, I've, I've tried to buy these because then when it's empty, I can recycle it, right? Mm -hmm. So just think about uh, when you're shopping about packaging. That's what's uh, an it's important, key. yeah, it, just to, just to tur tur turn your mind to, to that as well. And I know Lenny and I both uh, bring our lunch a lot and we eat those protein bowls, you know, they're healthy choice. I mean, Amy's, they're, they're, they're a lot of different brands of them. And some of them have the paper bowls, the, the biodegrade versus they're not the recyclable in your in your residential cart, no. but they will biodegrade, whereas plastic, as we've said, yeah. does not. So just kind of when shopping is just notes to self, is to just purchase, and that way you know you're voting with your purchasing, with your money and with what you purchase. And every time you buy one of those those, those uh, meals with, with the paper uh, bowl, you know, they're, they're gonna get cheaper because more people are gonna buy them. It's, economics 101 right or make but, more at dinner and then use your reusable containers to bring that up right eating leftovers oh numerous times. oh of course you know so that's, <laughs> again you know this is yes. this is uh, an, an on the go at, at, at all times so this is just you know but this is just a thought on the because some people kind of don't know it's like what does reduce mean it's usually packaging okay just so just kind of kind of think about that or that's an, e an easy way to do it so reuse um, we all try to reuse things. You know, I grew up in the country on a farm. We reused and fixed and whatever, most everything, right? That's, I didn't know that you didn't do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so um, it's, a, it's, 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 an, it's an interesting, because even, I mean, heck, even look at this. I mean, wrote, wrote my notes on the back. Of, a, of, of something that was I always in, print on both sides. Well, either print, always print on both sides, but your scrap paper or I'll pull something out of the recycling uh, bucket under my desk and that's what I write my notes on, you know? So reuse can be something as simple as that. Just reuse a piece of paper that's going to be recycled anyhow. And know? Julie, as you said earlier, a lot of these R's um, kind of interconnect. So that could also be called repurposing. Sure. Uh, one thing that, that Melinda and I have loved doing over the last year, during the growing season, when um, <clears throat> everything's being sold at the farmer's market, is we go to Dunbar Garden. We love Dunbar Garden, and, and so we did that a lot last summer. And one thing I got there last summer was this fan that they repurposed like a cereal box and made fans because it was flipping hot out there. So we... we <laughs> We got that, and uh, I just thought, and they just did the, like a paint screen over that. But that's a, re, a repurpose, right? And and if you ever eat at Trios and know that, that Kathy Peck, who is one of our city uh, directors, uh, and she, the liaison to the Sustainability she Commission, she is the liaison to the Sustainability Commission. She's fabulous, and she owns the restaurant Trios. If you eat there and you get something to drink, you will notice that your 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 little. Um, piece of paper or whatever that that has your cup on it or your drink on it or whatever is, is, is your, your cup thank yeah. you the coaster is is made out of uh, recycled paper i mean oh. it's just got and you know i mean it's just you know that's where you like to for me it's important where i spend my dollars because i feel like i'm voting for what I believe in and what i think is right and here's a, something a little humorous maybe some of you have heard of um <laughs> this company <laughs> who gives a crap so this is toilet paper and have other paper products but it's not paper Cle Cle kleenex and it, it's actually made out of bamboo though right <laughs> see it has it right there yeah. so yeah it's it's very interesting so you know there are so many creative ways to go about being sustainable these days but you know you don't have to you don't have to buy a lot of things start with refusing which doesn't cost you anything yeah and then work your way there it, it, it's kind of fun and, and to to be challenged by you know what i've got so used to just 
find this one little thing and then then it's done and when you start to think in another way um it's it's kind of fun and it's kind of easy it actually is. it is it, ma it, ma it makes a lot of things easier um th th this is kind of fun for um a reuse item so here's a reusable smart notebook i don't know if you can see 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 that so instead of buying a whole bunch of notebooks you just buy this one and then you write on it and you can see kind of how it works you write on it and then you use with with a certain pen that comes with it right and then um you can wipe it off with this little cloth that comes with it and um it's called the smart notebook of course of course it's smart and um so you know it's just it just doesn't have any lines in it. it feels a little it's interesting it feels like um i don't know it doesn't feel like paper but but it is but anyway it's just so you know there one you notebook can, you can you can one notebook one notebook because if you're doing a grocery list or something or what, whatever you're doing i mean you know it's just a uh, all, all kinds of ideas and, and, and thoughts. And there there are companies, in fact, I have this more and more at the grocery store that like like a bottle of oil, it'll say on the package, on the label, that this was made with um, with recycled plastic. Mm -hmm. So I gravitate to those kinds of things. Preserve is a company that makes, um, like this is a razor, um, out of recycled plastic. Um, there are lots of things out there like mm -hmm. that that are this is the same the same brand that Lenny was talking about preserve um, yeah made of recycled yogurt cups and you know your whole foods you know there, there are places that have more of these products obviously than, than others um, I try to shop local uh, that's another that's another thing to give back to your to, to your own community um, so I'm sure there are a lot of these types of, of, of companies online but um, but you know there are places that you places locally that you can find such uh, such such things so just to seek them out. That's right. Yeah. And so you know we've got lots of different kinds of bags. It seems like it's just easier and easier to get reusable bags, and they're not expensive and they're durable, and um, anyone can use them. I keep I keep a cup in my car for those emergency. Oh, oh my gosh, we're out of bread and milk. And even these kind, you know, wad up to almost nothing, and they're so lightweight that I keep one in my backpack or my purse all the time. Because yeah. if I do forget, um, I mean, I just grab it out. It, it's not bulky, and it doesn't take. It's not heavy. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that's another. That, that's another thought. So, so if you've got any questions regarding any of these R's we've talked about so far, go ahead and put them in the Q and A, um, and we'll get to that in a moment. And that kind of leaves us with the, the very end of the line then yeah. being recycle, right? And um, so, um, you know, a lot, we get a lot of questions, a lot of calls, a lot of emails about um, what can you put in your car? What can I, what can I put in my I'm confused about this or I'm confused yeah. about that. So, um, Julie, I don't know if you got that graphic, um, you know, that we have where it's very simple about what goes into your cart. Yeah, the accepted um, items because uh, it's one of two things. Either um, you wish cycle because you want so badly to, to recycle everything you can, and that's awesome. It's called wish cycling. Wish, but it's wish cycling. <laughs> when in doubt, leave it out is what waste management, who is the one who, you know, at the end processes this material. And that's what they tell us to share is when in doubt, leave it out. Because the way that it works is, you know, if it's trash, if a cart is contaminated, um, often that contamination will go to other carts that weren't contaminated. So when in doubt, leave it out. And that way, only the things that the end buyer can use that can be resold, we'll get that. It'll be clean. It'll be the thing that they can actually purchase um, from the MRF. So, um, some, some of those things that you can recycle, and there are many plastic jugs and bottles, plastics one and two. So, um, even, uh, even, col even colored containers, because mm -hmm. some people don't, you know, are a little concerned if it's a, if it's a color, but if it's a laundry detergent or, or what the content might have been. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, sometimes we get asked, what, what if it's laundry detergent though? I'm like, well, I know you're going to use it because it's expensive. So you rinse <laughs> it out 
and that's fine. Even, uh, you know, whatever it is, whatever kind of even cleaning product or whatever, it's okay. And that's the thing with all of it, just rinse it out, even like peanut butter, it doesn't, doesn't take very, very much to get that clean, really. I've gotten good at it. So uh, plastics, one and two bottles and jugs. And if you wonder what a one and two is, <clears throat> yeah, uh, on the bottom, there's a chasing arrow logo and it has a number. And if it's, if it's what we know is, if it's a color, it's a number two. This is it's, a number one. It's, it's a, the, 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 this, this is a number one. You know, the most, uh, the, the most recycled plastic container is a water bottle. Or in this case, it's a green tea bottle. But, you know, same difference. <laughs> These number ones. So if you wonder, but visually, if you don't want to look on the bottom of every container, if... And typically, if the uh, opening is smaller than the base, then that's a one or a two. And that's an easy, quick, visual way to assess and say yes to put it in your cart. And there are a few exceptions, like this Folgers container. But then you just look on the bottom, like peanut butter um, jars or relish. But those are those are pretty much the same all the way. But mostly, it is the smaller top drink the drink containers or uh -huh. or you know things such as this. You know. <laughs> And then, of course, your cake. I'm sorry, it's Julie. Yeah. And you are supposed to leave the caps on. Is that correct? That you can leave the caps on? Well, you either leave them on or you throw them Got away. You don't, put, you don't put them in your cart separately because they're so small. They will never make it through the processing system. They, they will fall through the cracks at this, at this huge uh, processing plant. So you either, you either put them back on like this or you just leave it off and throw them away. Yeah. And then of course, you know, aluminum cans, steel cans, that sort of thing. Um, my cat food cans, those can go into your recycling, right? Cards. And um, then paper fibers, pasteboard boxes. That's an easy one to go into the recycling cart. Um, this is sort of, this kind of reminds me of an egg carton in, in its material fiber but yeah that that is a recyclable thing all the junk mail um flyers brochures um, even if it has a window yeah we do get that question uh, fairly often it's like well but what if there's a, a plastic window on my mail is it okay do i have to take the window off and some people are willing to you know go to that it's like no yeah in the that. processing it is such a heated process that it zaps that 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 plastic so quickly that it'll just it'll just take the fiber and make it into pulp, and so that is a non-issue. So don't worry, just pitch it right on in there. Don't make it harder <laughs> than it needs to be. Of course, your cardboard boxes can go in the recycling cart, but if they don't, like I got a call last week from a woman who just moved to Little Rock, and she had so many cardboard boxes they're not going to fit in her cart. So the good news is that the day after your garbage and recycling pickup, um, every week, it's your yard waste pickup. So take your big or little uh, cardboard boxes and put them on the curb for your, your, neck, for your yard waste pickup day um, in the morning, just like you would your garbage cart or whatever. Just, yeah, just put it at the side. I mean, if it's big enough, you can put in your, your yard waste, you right? Can, yeah. You use, reuse, use, repurpose. Yeah, use it so, as a yard waste container, and uh, to just throw if it's after a, a you know like yesterday there was that there was that pop up wind whatever was happening there oh, for like an crazy. hour. I yeah. was out in it taking a walk with my dog. I'm like, what's happening? <laughs> so um, you know if there are limbs and leaves and all of that, just use a box and put and put all of your yard waste in there and put it to the curb and just use it as a collector container and and our our guys because they are city of little rock employees that work out at our solid waste division that that come along and uh it's a not to get too technical but it's a back end loader so they're they're they're, they're usually two two workers per truck they work, they get out and they actually get it and throw it in the back of the truck so they will look and see what's in there so if so don't put the little squigglies or if it's packing materials um just the box if it's 
if it's fiber packing material, such as stuff like this, it's, it, it's okay. But really, they just want corrugated cardboard because it's going to be processed the same as wood and leaves and such as that out at uh, the landfill. So that makes it kind of easy um, for you. Um, and then <clears throat> our recycling contract was extended. So um, for three years, three years. So we're good to go again with uh, waste management. Um, and we have gotten questions. Um, we've put back up on our website, luterock.gov, that cartons are now acceptable in your um, recycling cart. So here's a little bitty one. But you can <clears throat> put those in now right. as well. That's right. So, um, so yes, um, our contract uh, as of April this month was just was just extended for three years with waste management, and that is even though we work for the city of Little Rock, it was extended for the cities of Little Rock and Julia. I know you said you live in North Little Rock and uh, Sherwood. So, uh, for all three of those entities, so all three of those municipalities, uh, it's extended through April of 2024. And I do just want to point out that with that contract extension in Little Rock, glass is still not accepted in your recycling carts. Uh, whereas in North Little Rock, Sherwood, it is accepted now. Um, so, um, so just keep that in mind that glass is not something in Little Rock to put in your residential. Or Pulaski County. Okay, so it's weird. So Little Rock and Pulaski <laughs> County, no. <laughs> and uh, lives off. You never want to. You never want to live on the on the glass. But but you could go to Ace uh, Ace Glass. They have lots of drop off locations. Yeah, they they they're, they're really great, and there are a lot of drop offs around Central Arkansas. So take advantage of those. It's a you know, or or you can have it curbside, which is what I do. Uh, it's a hundred dollars a year to have your own uh, Ace Glass recycling bin. It's a eighteen gallon bin like we used to have, and they pick up every other week. Just like with our recycling, it's the same day as our, as our recycling. I'm going to go put mine out when I get home because um, Tuesday is my recycling day uh, of this week. So anyhow, so that's another option with them as well. We were talking about um, the recycling of your yard waste and how that gets turned into compost that then is resold. Um, so Melinda uses um, Urban Food Loop Project to do her composting. So that's a... a a cool startup company here in town. So it's again, buying local. So that's where her compost goes and they go to all kinds of schools and community gardens. So Urban Food Loop is great. I go to Dunbar Garden to do my um, composting. They've got a free composting program mm -hmm. there. So you can check that out at Dunbar Garden over on South Chester. So yeah. those are I'm another just, way to recycle, right? I'm, I'm, I'm a little lazy. I have I have the <laughs> residential collection, and and that is and that is weekly with um, Reed Admeyer. He was a, a Clinton school grad, and he did his capstone project in that, and then turned it into a business when he graduated. So it's pretty cool. But I, I do want to just mention that food waste in the landfill is really, really um, I don't know. It's it's potent. It, it as it as it biodegrades it releases a lot of methane and that is a really big contributor to greenhouse gas. Um, so it's good to divert, divert it from the landfill in other ways like composting. It's an easy thing to do and it's very good for the environment. So we have, we have some examples of, of, of what you cannot recycle and some of the main things, plastic bags. These are the bang. Don't you just hate seeing these in trees? And, really, yes. and I swear, I swear it's it's, it's on purpose. I, they, they, they go across it when they're in traffic and it blows across right in front of your car. It makes me crazy and it happens <laughs> on the reg. And, and you so, don't want to bag up your recyclables in your residential cart ever. No. Everything goes loose in your cart. Goes loose. Loose in the car. You bag your trash. Recyclables are loose. That's that's one big thing. And then, you know, I mean, this is another thing that people really, um, I'm sure, I'm sure I probably brought this, you know, again, have a cat. So <laughs> a lot of people think that cat and dog containers are recyclable. They are not. The inside is waxy. And unfortunately, that's just, you know, some things do just have to go to the landfill. Some things you do just have to put in your trash. And 
dirty diapers, or cat and dog bags, water hoses. The, those do not go into recycling. They get that a lot. Hangers. hangers. Well, hangers can hopefully, if you, if, if, if you do go to a cleaners, which I hardly even do anymore, but if you do, go to one, again, that's environmentally responsible and will probably take your hangers back and reuse them. But they don't go in, the last place they go is your recycling container, that's a no. And another waxy, papery thing that does, cannot be recycled in your car is such as this, um, that you might get at a fast food, fast food restaurant, yeah. And, um, and also we get asked a lot about like those berry boxes and these plastic containers at the grocery store, they're not recyclable. So um, you could reuse it as a storage container in your home, but you don't wanna put it in your residential cart. Um, so that that's not recyclable in your cart. Again, a, a plastic cup like this, it's not recyclable in your cart. Solo cups aren't either. I know that spring and summer is coming on. People love the solo cups, right? And they are a no. They are a no. So get asked a lot about that. And on your picnics, if you're not, you know, doing if, if, if you're not doing this on your picnic. That's okay, but just buy paper because it'll biodegrade when you throw it away. That's okay. Just buy paper plates and paper cups and things that will biodegrade when you put it in the trash. So when you're when you're out and about and on your picnics, just just do that. And, um, and the reason I, I feel like I need to give a little bit of an explanation because um, we really people really get upset about their berry containers and and their and their nut containers and they feel like they're eating healthy. And so they want to recycle. They're, they're the wish cyclers, and we, we love we love you. Um, but <laughs> however, the reason is there is no end market for these. So the recycling plant is it's basic. It's it's it's, it's business one hundred and one, right? It, because that plant is a business, and if they don't have someone to sell the end product to, and I think Lenny, you have a you have a pick, don't you, of, of what goes on at the uh, oh, sure at the recycling plant. Um, We'll kind of take yeah. that. So um, here's our virtual tour. So everything gets dumped on the floor there at the MRF, and then it gets um, sort of up the conveyor belts and sorted depending on what kind of material it is. And then ultimately it gets crushed into these bales and that's what's sold then um, to the companies that can, can buy it. So this is all your plastic jugs and bottles and, and that. So right. And that'll probably be sold to um, it could be an auto dealer for um, for carpeting and, 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 and automobiles, for carpeting in probably buildings like this, commercial buildings, uh, schools, uh, such as that, even even material on on um, on chairs and, and stuff. So it has an end market, but it has to have an end market. And so a whole 18 wheeler load of those bales will go to an end market that purchases these things. There is no one buying these. That is the only reason there is, there's just there's no one to buy them. So if you do send it out there with, while you're wish, wish cycling, someone will pick it out and it will still go to the landfill. Whether you send it or not, it still goes to the landfill. So, so yeah. again, that goes back to when you're purchasing, you know, if you've got options and so you don't have to buy that and you can, buy it in some other form with some other material to store it. Um, they, 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 that. Yeah, these were nuts. So you could get, you know, your, your your cloth bags and do the bulk nuts. And I know that was on hiatus a bit during during the pandemic, but I think that's coming back. As we slowly, come out so. of the, it, those options will be existing. Yeah. More, more, more options. So we've got some questions. Uh, let's work our way through that. Uh, one person asked, um, can you recycle aerosol cans? And if not in that residential recycling cart, uh, where can you recycle them? So the answer is uh, you can recycle them, not in the cart. So a place that you can recycle aerosol cans, uh, primary batteries, and by primary, you know, AAA, AA, CD uh, batteries, such as that, um, uh, plastic bags, glass, all of this is at a drop-off. They're called green stations. And e-waste. And e-waste. Thank you, Lenny. E-waste, of course. And all, and, and those are all recycled at, at green stations that are operated by the uh, Pulaski County Solid Waste District, uh, otherwise known as the Regional Recycling Waste Reduction District. 
too many names. <laughs> but anyhow, that's who, and, and so every city, little city of Little Rock, city, every city in Pulaski County has one of those drop-off locations. So for the city of Little Rock, ours is open every Thursday from, is it seven to five? Seven to five, every single Thursday. And it's located at 10,001 Canis Road. And it's behind our police station, kind of past the Baptist campus and a junior deputy is where you, you, you turn it in that parking lot right behind our police substation is where it's located currently. If that's going to maybe move, but right now, every Thursday and the first Saturday morning of the month, and they will take the aerosol cans and a whole host of things that you can find on our website and also on regional recycling waste reduction districts website. But so lrecycles.org is where to go. It's, you know, the LR of Little Rock. Um, so it's lrecycles.org. And that'll take you to the page on our website that has about the green station and about other things to recycle around town and what goes into your cart and so much more. So that's a great reference. It's a great reference, a great resource, but that's the aerosol can question. Okay, so let's see what about milk, orange juice cartons, um, like we, we, we said just here in the last month with our contract April. extension, um, these cartons clean again everything needs empty. to be empty main thing is empty <laughs> yeah yeah make sure you finished your milk and your orange juice right yeah, before you yeah. put it in empty. um yeah so that can go in now um let's see and there, there are not a whole lot of them just so you all know what happens with those is uh the plant manager at the recycling plant so he puts those in with uh, other fiber loads so up to, I say, think maybe three, maybe as high as 5% of other fiber material, such as these cartons, can get bailed in, in with other paper products, and the end user will still accept them, and they can still sell them for a profit, which is very important, because if they can't, then, you know, or if it's turned away by the end user, they're like, this is not quality, a quality bail or whatever. So, but that is why, because, but, but that's what they do with them. And they are, that's how they're recycled. Just so you know, they, they, they are, they are starting to do that again. And so, this month, so. the frozen food packages is a good question. I wondered that too. And I asked the folks at the Murph mm -hmm. and those packages, um, like our frozen entrees or whatever. We may even have, we may even have a couple. I think I so. Go, I could go. Yeah, that actually you can put that in your recycling cart. Um, so that's a good question. And uh, I was so grateful for that because um, especially with the teenage teenager at home, yeah, we go through a lot of things like that. So yes to those frozen food packages. I think Melinda's going to get one just to show as an example. Um, and then let's see here. What other questions? Yeah, these are some great questions. Um, so as far as composting at home, will the city ever provide support for composting at home? Um, don't know. I mean, right now we've got the options that we described that we each use, um, but <clears throat> certainly uh, yard waste leaves, cardboard boxes, those are weekly pickups by Little Rock. So it provides support for composting at home, especially yard waste and leaves. I'm not sure exactly what you, you, you mean by that, but um, I know we've been in, in talks with Dunbar Garden. It is a city of Little Rock Park, right? So it, it is a city facility. And we've been talking with them about doing, you know, kind of back to when we get on the outside of this pandemic, lunch and learns or some, some, uh, some, some things in the garden. And that is one of the topics that folks are very interested in on kind of teaching how to compost at home. So that is probably going to be one of the topics and you might want to watch for that at the Dunbar Garden on, on, on one of the learning sessions there. Yeah, um, you know, the question, um, I know you can't recycle dry cleaner bags, grocery bags, et cetera, in the cart. Are there other places you can recycle them? You mentioned the Green Station will take back some of those um, <clears throat> plastic, bags. plastic bags. Also, when I go to the grocery store, and I think maybe Walmart has it, Kroger, I don't know about Edwards Food Giant, but they will accept everything from your, um, uh, I guess it's called plastic film. So it's yes. like where my bread was stored right when i bought my bread that plastic bag 
and um, even like cereal. Where's the cereal box? So the, the plastic bag and the cereal box. That's another thing. I looked on Kroger and just kind of got the breakdown of what kinds of plastic bags are you talking about that you do a take back program on? And those are some of the things. So you might check out um, the Kroger's website to see what they accept because they've got that bin for those plastic bags right there at the entrance. So that's really helpful. That, that, that is a thing that uh, usually the retailer where you purchase those items does have a take back program right in the entrance. So Target, even, you know, right when you walk in, there are all those different containers that are separate that you can that you can stuff your 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 items back in um, if you if you don't need to use them. And also, I know that um, I have a cat and a dog, and I use um, you know random things like even even today up here we still get a newspaper, a real newspaper here in our office. Uh, I don't get it at home, but you still have those yellow sleeves on there, so. The girl that gets the newspaper up here saves her yellow sleeves for me for when I walk my dog. So, you know, there are other uses and purposes. Repurpose. And I know the Humane Society, the Animal Village, which is the city of Little Rock uh, facility, you know, they all are always happy to see those as, as well and appreciate and appreciate those. And then another question, how do you help someone understand that they should reduce their waste? I'd like to start that with, um, this, there's this great documentary that Melinda and I watched last year called The Story of Stuff. I think you can find it on YouTube, but boy, it was eye-opening just how the whole circuit from where it's mined for the materials all the way through to um, it just being dumped. And it's not even a circuit, it's more of a linear thing. And that's got to change so that it is full circuit when you're, um, when you're, buying something and then it's um, discarded and reused and remade into something else. Well, so right. So, so maybe suggest a documentary or two or maybe watch with them. Say, hey, you know, I want to show you something or whatever. But, you know, I think the, the, the best way to help someone understand it is to lead by example. You know, I mean, if, 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 if you're carrying your, I mean, people that you don't even know, if, if you have these bags, when you're in the grocery store, you know, who knows who's paying attention to that and saying, oh, you know what, I can, I can, I can get some, that's easy. That's because everyone that's sees something. the plastic bags hanging in trees and right. going around the street corners. That's something I could do. That's easy enough. And like Lenny mentioned, and she and I both have, if you have, we've had an extra one at the end and the person behind, I've had um, someone behind me saying, you know, that's such a great idea, whatever. And I'm like, you know, I have an extra one. Here you go. They have four things. And, you know, it's just pass it on. It's just share what, what, what you know and share what you have, but lead by example, uh, I think is, is, is a great thing. But I love the idea of just watch a movie with me. Hey, you know, documentaries are usually, what, 90 minutes long. So you can it was really well done. And um, it was, it's powerful. Very creative. It, it, makes an, it makes an impact. It does. Yeah. It does. Yeah. That's another thought. So any, let's see, any other questions that you may have? You yeah, I think there was a couple other, um, there's a comment up higher asking about if there's an, a yearly report on recycling, kind of like the um, Central Arkansas Water does the water quality um, and, and, you know, the status of the water system update. Um, is there anything like that that's produced for recycling? You know, waste management provides us the documentation since they are our contractor, um, and they we we actually get monthly um, a monthly report from them on contamination and and how what what percentage of contamination they do lump it into the contract so it does have all the cities. It has the city of Little Rock, the city of North Little Rock, the city of Sherwood and Pulaski County all in one. And then they do break it out as far as, as um, how much is contributed by municipality, but then the contamination amount is just a total. So you don't really know where it's coming. You know what I mean? All, you don't always know which, which municipality it's coming from or whatever. So we do get some of that information. Uh, it's not all, but the, uh, again, 
um, regional recycling waste reduction district is the one that it all flows through because the RFP does come from them. So they are a good resource for, um, for, for that information. And then there was another comment um, at the end when you were talking, um, when you were talking about take back programs and um, a question, a valid question about, you know, how do we know that these retailers aren't just taking it behind the building and dumping it in the trash? Is there any vetting or do we, is it on us to reach out to those retailers ourselves? Um, or kind of what are your thoughts about that? I have a lot of thoughts about that. Um, of course, we've all re remember some of the 2020, um, you know, kind of uh, tracking. I, I remember several years ago, heck, it may have been a decade ago at this point, where there was a 2020 expose, you know, and it was on e-waste. And it was an e-waste uh, contractor that uh, was sending their e-waste across to, you know, across the seas to third world countries, pretty much dumping what they didn't want. And uh, that was really an awareness that was shocking them, but it became a whole conversation, which is the first thing I think of when, when, when I see this. So, you know, we, we don't know for sure. It's the, really the onus is not on us to vet all the retailers um, on what they do, but uh, I, that's again why I like to shop local. And I do uh, small business and I like to shop in my neighborhood or people that, you know, people that I know or trust or whatever, as much as possible, because then you do, then you do know more about what they do with their things, uh, because oftentimes we're helping them try to figure those things out, right? Mm -hmm. And um, so I would just, I would just urge folks to, you know, to, to do as much of that as, as possible, but um you know, there is such a thing as greenwashing is what it's called. And people are saying that they're doing something and they're not doing it. But I don't, I don't know, you know, they're, they're good people, they're bad people. I, I don't, you know, with, I don't know how to always, uh, you know, police that or, you know, who, whose job that is. But, you know, um, you know, it, it does happen. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I'm, I'm sure it does. I try to be very, um, I'm, I'm very mindful about um I like asking I questions, and if it I have a question, I, I will ask you know, about, you know, take me to as high up as you can to, to let me know what's going on and, and what is your process after you collect these plastic bags, for instance, at Kroger, at Walmart, wherever, where do they go? And I mean, you know, there's got to be um, some kind of explanation for, for, you know, where it goes after you have released it into their stores. So. And, and, and the managers usually ask. know because, you know, they're part of a system. And so they all go, to, usually go to a regional, you know, plant or whatever. Uh, like, for example, I know Walmart with their plastic bags go and they're, they're made into Trex. It's a product called Trex. And it's like, uh, it looks like wood, but it's outdoor. They're all oh, outdoor right. wood pieces, right that people make you know, fencing and decking out of. So, uh, or you can go on their websites and just, and see and see what, they, they're trying to be trans, you know, as transparent as possible. But you can ask those questions on, if you if you wonder about a retailer, do a little research. I, I, I encourage you to. I, I have. I don't know, do, do your research and ask questions. Don't be afraid. So I think we, um, y'all are, I know y'all could go for two more hours, Melinda and Lenny, with <laughs> all the thoughts you have. Um, it is 7.30 now, hard to believe an hour has passed. I want to thank y'all so much for your, um, for your time this sure. evening and for all you gave us to think about. I want to thank the attendees. Um, I also wanted to just mention one thing before we wrap up, that Cal's um, Monday evening Earth Month programs will conclude on April 26, next Monday, with Lynn Foster of Arkansas Wild Spaces. So you don't want to miss that. Thank you, everyone, so much for joining. We really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you being so with much. us today. Website. If you have any questions, go to our website. Or dot org. Yeah. Email this, us. This dot org. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.